الرحيم وإذ قال الله يا عيسى بن مريم أأنت قلت للناس اتخذوني وأمي إلهين من دون الله قال سبحانك ما يكون لي أن أقول ما ليس لي بحق إن كنت قلته فقد علمته تعلم ما في نفسي ولا أعلم ما في نفسك إنك أنت علام الغيوب بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب الشرح صدري ويسر لي أمري وحي العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي We did from uh, number 109 until 115 last week Insha'Allah, the intention is to finish Surah Ma'idah today. Um, last time, we did two main topics. One topic was about Isa alayhi salam and the ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on him and all his mu'jizat. That was one topic. The second topic that we did was the demand of the Hawariyin to have a Ma'idah come down from the sky and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responding to Isa alayhi salam's dua. That was the two main things that we discussed. This week, insha'Allah, we will go through a conversation between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Isa alayhi salam and what is the benefit for us in this conversation. The first thing today is just to recall your memory. One notebook, two notebook. Well, no one else has notebooks, only two notebooks. <laughs> Inshallah, next week you all have to have notebooks. Okay? What I'm going to do just to get greater participation from you guys is uh, I'm going to ask you questions about some of the words and uh, just to check your memory. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Isa ibn Maryam. Why does he call him Isa ibn Maryam? You have to raise. You have to raise your hand because otherwise everyone speaks in one go. Yes. Okay. You can go. Son of Maryam. Son of Maryam. Good. And why does he mention Maryam? Because of what Nasara says that he's uh, like he's their God, whatever. Just There's two. Distinguish between the son of God and the son of Mary. Very good. The two main purposes of doing that. One is to distinguish him from what the Nasara have claimed him to be. And the second purpose is to remind us of the miraculous birth of Isa alayhi salam, that he is the son of Maryam and he does not have a father. Because every man, yunsab ila walidihi, every person is his nasab goes to his father. Right? So the father needs to be known. The only place where the person may be uh, attributed to the mother is if he is the child of zina and the father is unknown for example right so um, this is part of the izza of the man that he is, his lineage is known and his father is known but here allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls him isa ibn maryam because there is no father at all so to remind us of those two aspects of it Okay, very good. Good start, mashallah. We'll keep this up, inshallah. That's good. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wa idh qala. This connects back to Idh qala Allahu ya Isa ibn Maryam adhkur ni'amati in ayah number 110. And that was done when Allah says, Yawma yajma'u Allahu rusul. Which day does Allah gather all the prophets? That is the day of judgment. Right? So if we look, if you open your Quran and you can see beginning of ayah number 110, Allah says, إِذْ قَارَ اللَّهُ He then changes and says, إِذْ قَارَ الْحَوَارِيُّونَ in ayah number 112. So the Hawariyun could not have said that on the day of judgment. Necessarily it has to be in the dunya when Isa alayhi salam was here in the dunya as a prophet. Right? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here starts in ayah number 116, He says, وَإِذْ قَالَ اللَّهُ oh, You have a question? No. وَإِذْ قَالَ اللَّهُ يَا عِيْسَ بْنَ مَرِيَ Now the question then becomes, sorry? 
it has uh, several meaning is generally uh, it doesn't have several meanings but it, yes it does have several uh, meanings within Naho yes but here what I mean is what was the place and time that is is referring to that's that's my point so the first one is Yawma Yajma'u Rusul the second one when the Hawariyun are talking is when Isa alayhi salam is here in the dunya so the question becomes this last third one وَإِذْ قَالَ اللَّهُ يَا عِيسَ بَنَ مَرْيَمْ when and where is this happening the most common answer from the Mufassilun is this is on the day of judgment يَوْمَ يَجْمَعُ اللَّهُ الرُّسُولَ so this is connected to that place and time and um, the second call of Imam Suddi from the Tabi'een says that this is at the time that Allah has raised Isa alayhi salam to the heaven and then he is asking him questions. But from the siyaq, from the rest of the page, it seems that the first answer that this is on the day of judgment makes more sense. Okay? Yes. إِذْ قَالَ in the yes, okay. إِذْ قَالَ إِذْ قَالَ is in the past tense, is the madi form, right? And in the same way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِذْ قَالَ اللَّهُ يَا عِيسَ بِنَّ مَرْيَمْ Right? Uh, and again, قَالَ is used in the past form, although that is talking about the Day of Judgment. The benefit of using the past tense for something that will happen in the future is that Allah is giving us yaqeen that it will definitely happen. Okay? As if it has already happened. That's one benefit. The second benefit, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says over and over again in Surah An Nisa, Wa kana Allahu azizan hakima, wa kana Allahu ghafuran rahima, wa kana Allahu aliman halima. Same thing in Baqarah. Kana is used for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And kana is something in the past. Okay? So, when you use kana for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, specifically only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it means it is abadi. Okay? Azali abadi. I already taught you what azali and abadi is. Okay. What is azali and what is abadi? Not sure. Not sure. You need to have a notebook. All right. I remind you guys every week until everyone has a notebook. Who wants to try? Okay. What's the difference between azali and abadi? Temporary and permanent. No. Azali is without beginning. It's always permanent. Yes. Very good. Azali means no beginning. Okay? Abadi means no end. We are in Jannah Khalidina Fiha Abada. Abadi Abada. Okay? There was a time where we did not exist. Yeah? Then we come into being. We die temporarily, but we still exist. Then we go into Jannah, inshaAllah. And we are there. Abadi. So we are there forever. Okay? We exist forever. But there was a time we did not exist. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is azali. There was never a time he did not exist. Okay? So he, 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 when we say, Can Allah, Allah is azali and abadi. Right? So when we talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He kana, that means He always is. It is His hal all the time. Got it? So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about Himself saying qala Allahu, for us it is something that happens in the future. But Allah is not within the dimension of time. Does that answer your question? وَإِذْ قَالَ اللَّهُ يَا عِيسَ بَنَ مَرْيَمْ Now here the wow here has the benefit of connecting it back to يَوْمَ يَجْمَعُ اللَّهُ الرَّسُولُ Got it? So, 
أنت قلت للناس اتخذوني وأمي إلهين من دون الله Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking this in the form of a question to Isa alayhi salam. Did you say to the people, Allah is asking Isa alayhi salam, did you say to the people, take me, yani Isa alayhi salam, wa ummiya and my mother, ilahayni, as two gods, min dunillah, apart from Allah. What is the reason that Allah is asking Isa alayhi salam this question? It is the same purpose as what we said last week. يَوْمَ يَجْمَعُ اللَّهُ الرُّسُولَ فَيَقُولُ مَاذَا أُجِبْتُمْ Who answered your call? And the same thing is in Arabic it's called tawbikh. Tawbikh is used to embarrass someone. Okay? The kafir has multiple forms of punishment. The first kind of punishment is that which is physical pain. The kafir gets the punishment in the dunya, in the qabr, and in the akhirah. In the dunya, he gets the punishment in the form of all kinds of societal problems, all kinds of anxiety and depression, and naqs in his mal, and awlad, but that naqs in the mal and the awlad is shared with the Muslims. The Muslims get hayatan tayyibah, right? They get a good life. A good life does not mean a rich life, okay? Good life means that the person is contented, right? He knows he's on the truth. So he knows that whatever happens to him, is good for him. So he has a hayatun tayyibah. Whereas the kafir spends his life in discontent and in anxiety that he is not on the truth, he is not on the haq. That's his first adab. When he goes into the qabr, he is punished there. And then when he comes into the akhirah, he gets the physical punishment. But on top of the physical punishment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shames him and embarrasses him on the day of judgment. <coughs> so now imagine that Isa alayhi salam has come and behind him is his very large ummah, billions of people. From the time that he became a prophet <coughs> until the day of judgment, all of these Christians who said that, na'udhu billahi min thalik, that Isa is the son of God, all of those people are standing there realizing that Isa alayhi salam is a human being just like they are. The truth is already known. The books have already been given. The decision has already been decided. So they all know what is going to happen. They can see the hellfire in front of them. Now you imagine the situation that Allah brings forth Isa alayhi salam as the witness. And he knows everything that Isa Islam has done. And then he says to him, Did you say to these people to worship you instead of me? Do you understand the purpose now? It is to shame them and to embarrass them. That's one thing. The second is, if you focus on what is the concept of Trinity? I have taught you this already, so you should know what is the concept of Trinity. What's the concept of Trinity? So is there Maryam alayhi salam in that? No. no. Okay. Did any of the Christians believe in Maryam alayhi salam as a part of the Trinity? <coughs> there is a group of Christians that did do that. Okay. The majority in the world today don't have that. But if you go back historically, then there was a period of time where there were Christians who used to worship Maryam alayhi salam as part of the Trinity. That's one aspect. The second here is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have used another form instead of Maryam alayhi salam like they have a Ruhul Qudus. However, he chose that for a purpose. What is that purpose? 
is that if you probe the queer Christians and say that if Isa alayhi salam is the son of God, right, then how did that happen? Okay. And they don't have any reply to that. Except that some of their pastors and, and uh, leaders have said that God sired Isa alayhi salam. Okay. Then what they are saying is that they are giving an aspect of godness or uluhiya to Maryam alayhi salam. And this is what the majority of the Mufassirun have used as the explanation of why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought wa ummiya here. The last part of this phrase, min dunillah. Min dunillah means instead of Allah. Okay. Whereas what they were saying is that we worshipped Isa as the son of God and we worshipped the Holy Father as God as well. Right? But Allah says they didn't actually worship me at all. They worshipped Isa a.s. When the mushrikeen would go and worship the idols, how would they worship them? They say that we do ibadah to these idols. We make dua from these idols because they take our dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you go to, you know, the uh, illiterate uh, Muslim countries, and what you see happening there is people go to the mazar where there's a Pir Sahib buried, and they make sujood to the qabr, and then they make dua. Do they do that in Tajikistan? It's there as well, subhanAllah. And awliya Allah, and they go and, uh, sorry, it's a business. Yeah, it is a business. And they go and ask dua, and what their concept is, is these things bring us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they didn't actually worship me, they worshipped these things. They worshipped Isa alayhi salam, they never worshipped me. So it is as if to say that the true worship is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and when you worship anything else but God, it is as if you have not worshipped God at all whether that was in partnership or besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now look at the response of Isa alayhi salam. Isa alayhi salam knows that he is being asked this question not because Allah does not know the answer. He knows he is being asked for the purpose of the shaming of his people. So here Allah shows the beautiful response of a prophet and how our true relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be. And there are multiple aspects to how he responds. First of all, he says, Subhanak. What does that mean? What does Subhanallah mean? Who should I pick on? Let's pick on you. You'll come every week now, inshallah. <laughs> Go on, build that on that pure what? What's the word in Arabic that I've taught you guys? Pass. Okay. Where's your notebook? <laughs> You're going to have your notebook next week, inshallah. Yes? Tanzi. Very good. Did you see that? Write it on your, no your notebooks, please. Tanzi. Okay. Tanzi means to purify your concept and your ideology of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the entire response that Isa alayhi salam, if he only said this, this would be enough. But Allah expands on what he says. So he says, for, for, first of all, he says, subhanak. Okay. You Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are not worthy that anyone should be in partnership with you. You Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are not worthy that any prophet of yours should say that to the people. You Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are not worthy that you should be in need of anyone in between you and your abd. Right? It's like a whole textbook, subhanak. You can go on and talk and talk and talk about it. Right? Then kaf here is for khitab to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he goes on further. He says, 
ما يكون لي أن أقول ما ليس لي بحق. He doesn't say I didn't say that. When you go to a court of law and you are asked a question, did you see Wissam shooting Bassam? And you say, I didn't see anything. Okay, that's what you would normally say. I didn't see anything. But here Isa alayhi salam says, Ma yakunu li. My place is not to say anything that would not be my place. Okay? So he is first of all saying, Subhanak. Nothing evil is attached to you. And then he says, My place in the dunya is what? Is as a prophet, I have to follow what you are saying. It is not becoming of a prophet to say anything wrong. Then he says, "In kuntu qultuhu faqad alimta." Here now is the crux of the matter. He says, "If I had said it, then you would know it already." I want to teach you a definition of ilm. Who can give me? Mashallah, we have uh, people who have knowledge that we didn't know about. What is the definition of ilm? To know something. To know something. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is azali abadi. Okay, how does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala know something? He knows everything all the time, right? His ilm is azali abadi. So why does Isa alayhi salam say, faqad alimta? Why does he talk about the ilm of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like that? And the answer is that one of the definitions of the ilm is something becomes Zahir, something becomes apparent and known. For example, Muhammad has taqwa inside his heart. Allah already knows he has taqwa inside his heart. But then he tests him so that, subhanAllah, Muhammad got cancer. Okay? And he was given options of getting money from haram to get this treatment and to go and get that kind of thing and that kind of thing. So he's being tested and his sabr is being tested. And then the taqwa becomes apparent. So it becomes known. Allah already knew about it, but when the matter actually happens, it becomes zahir. And that's one of the definitions of knowledge. Um, think of it a different way. Um, Newton, an apple fell on his head, so they said. And then he started thinking, and he started thinking, and he said there must be a law of gravity. Did the law of gravity exist before Newton? Yes, exists. Khalas. This is the, the, the best example I can give you. The thing already existed. He just figured it out and called it a a name. And so when he called it out, it became Newton's first law, right? So the same thing happens that as things happen in the future, second by second, as they are happening, they become knowledge for us, something new is happening. But for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he already knew about it. So Isa alayhi salam says that had I said it, you would already know about it. You would not need to Ask this question. تَعْلَمُ مَا فِي نَفْسِي وَلَا أَعْلَمُ مَا فِي نَفْسِكِ You know what is inside me and I do not know what is. How do we translate that? Nafsi. <laughs> now this is, this is like quite complex, right? I have a nafs, I have a being. Where is the nafs? How does it exist? Okay. The easiest way to explain it, it is a that. It's your being. And so the same thing that we say about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the nafs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is his that as well. So some people have given the tafsir of saying, تَعْلَمُ غَيْبِ وَلَا أَعْلَمُ مَا فِي غَيْبِكِ That's one tafsir. is to say that you know what is hidden for me. Nothing that I have is hidden from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know everything that I hide from human beings, you know that. And I do not know your hidden things. 
because we only know about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what he has told us about himself. Innaka anta allamul ghuyub. Innaka would have been enough, right? But anta here has been brought in for ta'kid, allamul ghuyub. We did last week, allam is the mubalagha form of the one who knows. Al ghuyub is the plural form of ghaib. Okay? Any questions so far? It's an emphasis, right? Because ka here is for khitab. And then the anta is added here for ta'akid. Ma qultu lahum illa ma amartani bihi. We say la ilaha illallah. The brother yesterday was asking when you do the tashahud, how do you say it? So one of the forms that the Hanafis use is when they say la ilaha illallah. So there's the raising of the finger when you say la ilaha and when you say illallah, you put the finger down. So one is negation and one is affirming. So the first ayah talked about him negating what he did not say. Okay? And then to add further emphasis on what he has not says, he talks about what he actually says. Alright? You got this point? He says, مَا قُلْتُ لَهُمْ إِلَّا مَا أَمَرْتَنِي بِهِ I only told them what you ordered me to say. What did you order me to say? أَنِ اعْبُدُ اللَّهَ رَبِّي وَرَبَّكُمْ And here is as an order. Right? It is as if Isa alayhi salam is now talking to the people and saying, أُعْبُدُ اللَّهَ رَبِّي وَرَبَّكُمْ Got it? Now, what is the benefit of that? What is the meaning of Rabb? Yes, the provider. What else? Nurturer. Nurturer. Okay, good. One. Sorry. It gives all life, so that's the nurturer. Yes. One last component of Rabb. Protector. is yeah, one of the components of nurturing. Is you, you protect and you nurture. Sustainer, we said already. Yes? Uh, I think last, but now uh, he saw what you said. Mm -hmm. When uh, you said, uh, Rabbi Muswai, like he take care of him when he went down. Yep. yep. So that's, that's what we were talking about nurturing and taking care of. Mm -hmm. Okay, in your notebooks, write down owner. Owner and sustainer and nurture. These three. Meanings are all part of Rabb. So he says, Rabbi wa Rabbukum. <coughs> He's my owner, your owner. He nurtures me, he nurtures you. He sustains me, he sustains you. What did he just do there? He said, my status and your status in comparison to the Rabb is exactly the same. Though he is a prophet, they are not prophets. He is ulul azmi min al rusul. He is one of the great five prophets mentioned in the Quran, and they are. You can say his sahaba, but they are still not prophets, right? So their rank amongst human beings does not go anywhere close to him. But he says, worship Allah. Your asl of your being on the earth is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is your Rabb. Right? So in one short phrase, he negated all of Christianity. Inna Allah Rabbi wa Rabbakum. So whenever you look at um, any statement of Isa alayhi salam in the Quran, you will find over and over again this statement. Okay? Inna Allah Rabbi, أَنِ عَبُدُ اللَّهَ رَبِّي وَرَبَّكُمْ وَكُنْتُ عَلَيْهِمْ شَهِيدًا مَا دُمْتُ فِيهِمْ Then he says that whilst I was with them, I was a witness upon them. So whatever they were saying or whatever they were claiming, I was a witness upon that. Meaning what he is saying is that in my lifetime, they did not say these things. We know that historically, if we use the Gregorian calendar, 
then the Christian people say that Isa alayhi salam died when he was 32, 33 years old, something like that. Paul came along in the year 64. He did not meet Isa alayhi salam at all. And he said that I have seen a dream and I spoke to Isa alayhi salam in a dream and he said to me this and this and he wrote the book and then compiled the various books from the Hawariyun and made it into what he called the New Testament. And he changed the deen of the Christians from worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone to this concept of Trinity. So what we can safely say is that there's no evidence ideologically of Trinity whilst Isa is, a, is, a, is alive on earth. Musaylamat al kadhab came and proclaimed that he was a prophet at the time of the Prophet During the lifetime of the Prophet there were two people that claimed to be prophets. In the time of Abu Bakr anhu, there were already six people that claimed to be prophets. So what we know is that thing happened and the Prophet is a witness on this. But at Isa alayhi salam's time, he has no evidence that anyone has done shirk. He is finding out on the Day of Judgment, or you can say that he will find out when he comes back from the heavens, that people have done shirk on him. فَلَمَّا تَوَفَّيْتَنِي كُنْتَ أَنْتَ الرَّقِيبَ عَلَيْهِمْ وَأَنْتَ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ شَهِيدٍ I want you to open to Surah Ali Imran and look up ayah number. إِذْ قَالَ اللَّهُ يَا عِيسَى بْنَ مَرْيَمْ Ayah number 55 of Ali Imran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says إِذْ قَالَ اللَّهُ يَا عِيسَى إِنِّي مُتَوَفِّيكَ وَرَافِعُوكَ What word is used here? Tawafi. Okay Go back to where you were And then the next surah is An'am And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَهُوَ الَّذِي يَتَوَفَّاكُمْ بِاللَّيْلِ وَيَعْلَمُ مَا جَرَحْتُمْ بِالنَّهَارِ And he is the one that does tawaffi bil-layl. Tawaffi actually has three meanings. Okay? One meaning is the meaning of wafat, which we use commonly in Arabic and also in Urdu, which means death. The second meaning is qabd al-ruh, which is commonly done at the time of sleeping. Allahu yatawafal anfusa hina mawtiha walati lam tamut fi manamiha. Okay, so Allah takes grab of the soul in its sleep. The same word tawafi is used as the same word for death. That's why before you go to bed, you say which dua? Bismillahi. Amutu wa ahya. Right? So, in the name of Allah, I die and I live. That going to sleep is like going to death. So, every time you go to sleep, you're reminding yourself that you're going to die one day. So, that's two meanings. The third meaning comes from, from Ali Imran, inni mutawafika wa rafi'uka, which is to raise the soul to the heaven. So, here he says, falamma tawafaytani, means when you took my soul to the heavens. Okay, because he has to come back. Alright. Kunta anta raqib alayhim. Now, Isa says, You are the raqib, you were the one that was very close to them. You were watching every step, every statement they made. You were the one that was watching everything. So you are more aware of what they said and why they said it more than I am. Wa anta ala kulli shayin shaheed. He is shaheed on certain things that he can see. And Allah is shaheed on every single thing that is happening. In tu'adhibuhum fa innahum ibaduk wa in taghfirullahum fa innaka anta al-azizul hakim. This is a very interesting ayah. Uh, often the hafaz will get mixed up here and they will say fa innaka anta al-ghafur al-rahim. They will often make a mistake here. But this is one of those places where Allah says he is al-azizul hakim. And it makes sense if you think about it. 
the background is everything about people who did shirk. Can shirk be forgiven? Shirk cannot be forgiven. That's why there's no al ghafur al rahim here. Okay? So if we look at it and look at the words, Allah, Isa salam says, if you punish them, they are your slaves. And then he says, وَإِن تَغْفِرَ لَهُمْ فَإِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ What does Al-Aziz mean? What does Al-Aziz mean? You remember? No? Pass? Okay. What does Al-Aziz mean? Pass. Al-Aziz. Creator is? No. Al-Khaliq. Great. Um, kind of. Al-Aziz means the Qudra that nothing will be ghalib over it. Okay? So nothing can overcome the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is able to do everything. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, though he has the ability to do everything, he is Al-Hakim. So he uses that with hikmah. So Isa alayhi salam is saying, if you punish them, they are your slaves. You are Al-Aziz Al-Hakim, therefore you punish. Right? And he also says, if you forgive them, there is no one that can stop you from forgiving them because you are Al-Aziz. What he is doing here is putting himself in the complete submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and saying, I didn't say anything wrong. What I said to them, what you ordered me to do, then whatever you do with your slaves, I am not coming between you and what you do with your slaves. Okay? I'm not here to protect them. You are Al-Aziz, you are Al-Hakim. If you decide to punish them, you are Allah. And you own them. And if you decide to forgive them, then you are Al-Aziz and Al-Hakim. But what he is not saying is, please forgive them. He is not asking for their forgiveness because he knows that they have done shirk and therefore they can't actually be forgiven. All right. Ibrahim alayhi salam made a dua. Rabbi innahunna adlalna kathira min nas faman tabi'ani fa innahu minni wa man asani fa innaka ghafoor rahim He said ghafoor rahim Right? Ibrahim alayhi salam says that these idols, they have misguided many people. Whoever has followed me, so he is from me. فَإِنَّهُ مِنِّي وَمَنْ عَصَانِي Whoever has disobeyed me, then you are غَفُورُ rahim. So Ibrahim alayhi salam asks for maghfirah. Musa alayhi salam, on the other hand, what did he say about Fir'aun? رَبَّنَا اشْتُدَّ عَلَىٰ أَمْوَالِهِمْ what did he say? What's the ayah? رَبَّنَا طِمِسْ عَلَىٰ أَمْوَالِهِمْ وَشْتُدْ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ فَلَا يُؤْمِنُوا حَتَّى يَرَوْا الْعَذَابَ الْأَلِيمِ When the, when the azab is being asked for, he says, Oh Allah, destroy their amwal and lock their hearts so they don't believe until your azab comes. Okay? So on the one hand, Ibrahim alayhi salam was seeking mercy. On the other hand, Musa alayhi salam was seeking azab. Nuh alayhi salam sought adab on his people. Yes? Didn't he? And here Isa alayhi salam is saying that if you forgive them, I'm not asking for their forgiveness. I'm just saying that if you forgive them, you have the capacity. You are Al-Aziz al-Hakim. Now understand why. Ibrahim alayhi salam's dua was in the dunya. And his people were not wiped out. Nuh alayhi salam's people were wiped out that was in the dunya. Musa alayhi salam's dunya, dua was in the dunya and Fir'aun was wiped out. All of those dua are what? In the dunya. Isa alayhi salam is asking in the day of judgment. Okay? There, there is no purpose of asking for their punishment. What he is actually saying is, you are the judge, you are the Rabb. He is putting himself into complete ubudiyah, complete submission. He is completely as a slave in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is how a person should be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One more amazing thing in this ayah. 
all of humanity is considered abid. Those of the abid who worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are ibad. Did you get that? All of humanity are abid. Those who are believing in Allah, worshipping Him alone, are considered ibad. وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَانِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنَا Here, Isa alayhi salam says, عِبَادُكْ Why does he say that? Because only those who recognize Allah in the dunya are considered ibad. In the day of judgment, everyone is ibad. Because they have all now recognized Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, number one. Number two, no one is able to do anything by themselves. Their skin says, you did such and such. Their hands say, you did such and such. Your feet say, you did such and such. So it is as if you no longer have capacity over your own body. So everyone is now truly enslaved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shall we do the last two ayat? You guys have himma? You are tired? Finish the surah? Okay. قال الله هذا يوم ينفع الصادقين صدقهم Allah says this day is the day that the truthful will benefit from their truthfulness. Shaytan will come on the day of judgment and say, وَوَعَدْتُكُمْ فَأَخْلَفْتُكُمْ I gave you a promise and I turned away from my promise. Is he being truthful or not? Yes. On the day of judgment, he is being truthful. Because he is saying that I, you know, tricked you. So now he is complete truthfulness. But does it benefit shaitan? No. He goes into Jahannam. So here what is meant by as-sadiqeen is those who are as-sadiqeen in the dunya, they'll be verily those who will be benefiting on the day of judgment. <laughs> the kafir will come when you come to Surah Nahal. He will say that we did not worship these shuraka. And Allah will call them liars on the day of judgment. So it is truly those who do sidq with Allah, which is to say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, with complete truthfulness, it will be those people who will benefit on the day of judgment. Lahum jannat, they will have gardens. Tajri min tahtihal anhar, underneath which will be rivers. Khalidina fiha abada, they will be in there forever, forever. Radi Allahu anhum wa radu an. Allah will be verily pleased with them and they will be pleased with Allah. Allah is pleased with them when they took Iman and they are pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they enter into Jannah and they see the Naim of Jannah, then they have complete rida. Allah says at the very end of Surah Al-Layl, وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا يَغْشَى وَلَا سَوْفَ يَرْضَى Yeah? Who is that about? Do anyone know which Sahabi that's about? Abu Bakr, yes, mashallah. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, very good. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about Abu Bakr that he will have rida in the future. Right? Where is that complete rida? The greatest of the Muslims have rida in the dunya and the akhirah. Okay? When you have complete sabr over what Allah has given to you and what He has not given to you, then that is a state of rida. Okay? The sabr has multiple darajat and the highest daraja is rida, that you are pleased with what Allah has given you. So when you enter into Jannah and you see what has been given to you, then you are pleased with that which has been given to you. ذَلِكَ الْفَوْزُ الْعَظِيمُ Two pages later, we will come to ذَلِكَ الْفَوْزُ الْمُبِينُ So it is as if the fawz itself has different darajat. Fawz means victory. Right? So Allah says that this victory, that they are number one in Jannah, number two, they are there forever, number three, they are there forever, two forevers, number four, Allah is pleased with them, Number six, they are pleased with Allah. All these six things together, ذَلِكَ الْفَوْزُ الْعَظِيمِ لِلَّهِ مُلْكُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَمَا فِيهِنْ وَهُوَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ 
Allah joins together the whole surah in this ayah now. Allah says, I have mulk of everything. I have mulk of the Anbiya, mulk of humanity. I have mulk over the stars, over the earth, over the scars, over the malaika, the ashjar, every single thing. As if to show the extent of what he owns, he does not say, wa man fihin, he says, wa ma fihin. Man, you can write down in your notes here, man is used for the uqala, and ma is used for ghayr al-uqala. Uqala means intelligent beings. So man is used for human beings, jinnat, and for the malaika. These are the three intelligent beings. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. In the tafsir of Alameen, we talked about this, that these are the three uqala. But And you usually use man for that. And when you mean ma, you mean the jamadat. Right? The things that are non-living beings. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as if he is saying, he owns everything, and everything that he owns is vastly greater in number than the number of intelligent beings. And then the next meaning is that when Allah gives his milkiya is what? All of everything. There is nothing that is outside of his kingdom, outside of his ownership. How did the surah begin? Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu, awfu bil uqud. We talked about ahkam after ahkam after ahkam. We then took a pause and then Allah directed his discussion towards the Yahud. Then we came back to ahkam and then ahkam and then ahkam and then more ahkam. And then he started a discussion to the Nasara, which we did for the last few weeks. And then he finishes all of that and says that you, the Yahud, did not listen to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so you will be punished. And he says, you, the Nasara, did not listen to Allah, you will be punished. You, the Muslims, listen to Allah, so you are from those, radiyallahu anhum wa radu an, and Allah's milkiya is that he gives to whomsoever he wills, and his milkiya is who. To follow a hakam is to connect with rububiyya or uluhiyya. Rububiyya? Okay, justify your answer. You know how they say in HSC exams. <laughs> it's a lordship, like whatever a lord commands, you have to follow. Okay, good. But doesn't the ubudiyya relate to uluhiyya? It's a trick question. Ubudiyya relates to both Rububiyya and Uluhiyya. You can justify your answer in both different directions, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the ilah, therefore he is the ma'bud. Because the definition of ilah is al-ma'bud, right? Does every, so these Arabic terms, everyone gets it or do I need to translate anything? Everyone got it? Yes? No? Yes? The ma'bud is the one that is worshipped. The ilah is the one that is worshipped. So therefore, ilah is the ma'bud. Got it? Rububiyya is Allah's being the Rabb. And because he is the Rabb, then he is deserving of thanks. And how do we give thanks? By worshipping him. Got it? So both the ubudiyya relate to that. So when we talked about the whole surah being ahkam, they relate back to this ayah. That Allah owns everything. وَهُوَ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ He finishes with this, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to do everything. This then connects to the next surah, Alhamdulillahi alladhi khalaqa samawati wal ard, waja'ala al-dhulumati wal nur. So inshallah we will start from that from next week. Alhamdulillah we have finished surah Ma'idah. We started back in 2015, so in eight years we have completed eight ajza, alhamdulillah. One juice per year, inshallah. <laughs> Sorry? 
How long is Maida? Maida, I think, is about 24 pages from no, memory. How long it takes the, the, which, when you start? Well, I think we did Maida a little bit faster. I'll have to go back and go onto YouTube and see when I uploaded the Maida. Yeah. Can you stop that? Ali, Jazakumullah khair. Yes.